I'm Mark Rosano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network. So today we have our EIA show. I'll be back in the uh, back in the saddle now that the, some of the travels slowed down a bit, and we're just going to cover you know what's been happening in the market so far. So we want to look at how global builds have persisted and what does that mean? Because obviously in the U.S. we had a draw, but when we look abroad, there's been some builds both onshore and offshore, and we want to look at. How is that going to change as we continue through the shoulder season, but then start to come into, you know, your peak driving period when you have refiners starting to ramp back up and what that's going to look like. And then we want to look at product demand and how that's gotten stronger based on we have uh, spring break, we have Easter, we have Passover, we have a lot of things coming up which is normally and and if unfortunately I wasn't here for the last two weeks, but we we would have been talking on how this is the normal kind of March higher in terms of demand. But we want to look at where should we be versus where the EIA is saying and where we I think we settle out as we go through uh, the rest of the spring and as we set up for the uh, for the summer. And then we want to look at what's happening abroad and how these things are shifting. And, And one of the big drivers of that is going to be all of the Russian diesel that is coming to market and how that's coming to market and what that could do to not only crack spreads, but also underlying uh, just refiner activity as we go through the remainder of the year. So I apologize. I, I do have a cold, you know, as, as anybody who has little monsters knows it, they, they, we just give it back and forth to each other until they're about 18 and then uh, giving it to someone else uh, in, in college and then beyond. So (laughs) just bear with me as, as we, uh, as we go through this. So just kicking it off, uh, you know, we want to look at just the, the broad strokes of where things are. And you can see that on total oil product, uh, supplies, oil and product, the surplus widened to from 44.9 to 49.8. But as we've been saying, you know, the comps got easier because when you look at the average, you know, typically when you go through March, April, May, you normally have some of that that drop down. But instead, as we've been saying here, we're just going to go sideways. And that's why things get, uh, you know, it looks worse than it really is just based on the averages. And that's why when we look at things going forward, we want to look at how is this being broken down? And that's when you turn to total crude stocks, land and floating, where the surplus widened from 33.3, 37.3 to 46.8. And the biggest issue is the floating and transit side, because we have a lot of uh, Russian products still on the water. We've had some pretty extensive slowdowns of buying out of uh, from the Middle East as well as West Africa, which has left more in the water. And that's created some of these bigger problems where then when you look at the total oil product stockpiles, the surplus narrowed from 7.6 to to, uh, to 3. You can see that this, the crude side has built up while the product side has continued to kind of follow essentially that drop down. And we, we see this balancing out a bit where we're going to see some of the crude stocks come closer to the average, but some of the product stockpiles starting to get bigger and bigger as we have, uh, again, the more of that Russian product comes to market and we have additional uh, slides that we're going to show you in segment three just looking at how much uh, Russian uh, diesel has really come to, uh, and gas oil in general has come to the market. So then when we look at land, uh, surplus narrowed from 5.3 to 1.4, we're just seeing a pretty steady uh, increase when you look across all the regions in terms of just following the trend. Excuse me, west of Suez, the surplus narrowed from 15.6 to 11.5, and we, we expect it to continue to move along uh, the, that average with land storage east of Suez deficit now are from 10.3 to 10. And that's something where we see that, again, moving closer and closer to the uh, the average. On the floating storage side, the surplus widened from 30 to 31.4. West of Suez was uh, really the biggest driver of that with the surplus widening from 3.5 to 6.8. A big chunk of that was, again, West Africa as well as the Middle East, but West Africa was the biggest driver when you look at some of the increases because a lot of that product was being brought in by uh, by China and India uh, from Russia, and that's leaving a significant amount in the water in West Africa. And now the other thing is 
France typically buys about 110,000 barrels a day of Nigerian crude. And just with all of the strikes and all of the protests, you're seeing that not happen to the same degree, which is, again, leaving more in the water. Floating storage east of Suez, the surplus now from 18.5 to 15.6. And a lot of that is because of the timing delay between uh, Asia, where Middle East is still fairly elevated. But Asia, we saw a lot come off of the water. But there's there was a, a big spurt of buying, which is going to show up and again, kind of balance that out as well as we go through the rest of uh, not so much. Obviously, we're at the end of this this month, but as we go through April. So now when we look at crude stocks, we had a draw of seven point four nine uh, million. That's still, again, twenty three point three million above the five year. You know, when you look at the drivers of it, you had some builds in the East Coast and the Rockies, but you had a small draw from Pad 2 uh, of just 600,000, which is, again, pretty much in line with the five-year. Cushing had a drop of 1.63 million. <clears throat> but at, when you look at it, it's only 2.4 million below the five-year average. It was really Pad 3 that was the biggest driver of this, with Pad 3 falling 6.39 million. And that's, again, when you look at the five-year average, that's still $27.6 million above the five-year, but that drop came because there was a big drop-off in imports and exports remain elevated. So you had three pieces that really drove this. I should just to break it down. You had refining activity increase. You had exports drop. And you, I, I'm sorry, you had exports increase and imports drop, which resulted in a sizable uh, reduction uh, from pad three, which is something that it will balance out when you look at where floating storage is. There was a big increase in floating storage into, into the US. And that's just going to be some of that timing delay is when that comes into the market. And all of that will be into pad three. So when you look at pad three inventories, you can see it's still the third highest ever. It's just moving kind of along that 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 norm because you can see that there's typically at this point in time, you start to get those drops. And it, that's why it's I think it's ver- fairly normal when you look at the 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 size. I think the the headlines were like biggest drop since November of you know 2021. Or <laughs> it could have been last year. I don't know. I, I, that's a little sensationalized. It's more along the lines of, well, what should happen when you look at 2022, when you look at 2018, you can see that there were normal drops, even 2020. When you look at, uh, at 2016, which there's typically the drop is a little bit later, but you start to see that rollover and it's because refiners are coming back online. They've done their maintenance. They're now getting ready and, and starting to turn back on to, to provide this gasoline and the, uh, the octane and other pieces for the core driving season. And then when you look at Cushing, uh, Cushing typically starts to, to have some draws here. Again, we think that there's going to be this balancing act based on the product coming out of uh, Canada, the product coming down, and then where that'll sit over the uh, the next few few weeks. And again, it's just going to be kind of this managing back and forth. And as exports slow down just a bit, and, uh, and imports increase coming down from Canada, we should see this kind of normalize, if you will, right around these levels. So then when you look at runs, this was again, again a big driver. You had a, uh, an increase of 1.7%. And uh, as you saw the increase, it went from 88.6 to 90.3, because this is again where we start to see that run up. And you can see that, there, that all of it was really driven by pad three, which had an increase of 458,000 barrels per day of runs, which is why you had, again, that's, that's that large mismatch, which drove down those, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, storage in that region. And then that'll start to balance out as you start to get things turning back on and getting ready as things come out of their maintenance season. Now, when you look at uh, where we are, as you can see, we started out fairly low, but then as we got into into the middle of March, you start, you started to see those increases. And now we're coming in pretty pretty aggressive versus where we have been previously with only two years being higher over the last 10 when you look at just this activity and that's something that's going to continue as long as diesel cracks remain now we do think there's going to be some pressure to the diesel crack and that and as that starts to diminish and depending on what gasoline does we think that you're going to have this refinery utilization rate run up and then actually start to come down as you start to see some of the margin come out of the system. 
Now, when we start looking at the imports, this is what we were talking about with this with the sizable disconnect. So imports came down 846,000 barrels a day, while we had increases in, in runs, especially in pad three of 458,000 barrels a day. So imports into pad three were down 705,000 barrels a day. Again, that mismatch is why we saw some of these drawdowns, which is something that will adjust again as we start to come into some of that normalcy, because this is why we were saying it's pretty normal to happen around this time of year as you get, again, turnarounds. It's all a matter of how early did refiners go into turnarounds and how quickly do they come out and, and do they kind of slow it down. Um, pad two had a drop. 748,000 barrels a day. That's something that will start to reverse higher. Uh, and, but it's just going to, again, it's just going to take that timing side in terms of when that crude is available. So then when we break it down here, you can see that pad three uh, imports have dropped. That will reverse higher. It's not going to get back to the five year average. But again, it's going to be fairly sizable and come back into the middle of that cloud. Uh, pad two had some a sizable drop. You can see that there's normally a drop. It usually happens in either February or April. So based on maintenance, based on what's happening, it's not surprising to see it. It's just a matter of when does it snap back. And based on what we're seeing, we should see an increase back to the five-year average over the next two weeks. And then eventually it'll go again back above and stay above that five-year average. When we look at implied demand, uh, we had another increase in uh, in gasoline demand. It went from 8.96 to 9.14, and that's 288,000 above the five-year average. But then when you look at it on other uh, metrics, both TomTom, Tom, uh, Gas Buddy, it's actually closer to about 8.6, 8.7. And that's something that I think makes more sense be, uh, based on current driving because this is showing you, again, when it's bought from the blender and when that, when that moves into the system. And for those that have children, you know, you either have, uh, you know, spring break this week, some, for some it was last week, you have this week, then you have Easter, uh, you know, kicking off uh, next week, you have Passover. So there's a, there's a lot of driving and then there's some sizable breaks in terms of vacation. So a lot of this is being pulled in ahead of that demand, which is why you see kind of that run up, a fairly sizable collapse, which will be Again, the, the, so we're running higher than what is actual demand. Then we're going to run lower based on where actual demand is, which is why we talk so much about the four-week rolling average and, and again, kind of moving through some of those, uh, those overhangs. D, uh, Dislit continues to struggle. Again, we've talked about it on Twitter, on here. Trucking is slow. Train, uh, rail is slow. And that's, again, going to be a big overhang. And then Jet had a drop from 1.6 to 1.44. Again, that's just going to be the balancing act. And it's interesting because one of the things, and we'll talk about it more in segment two, we've seen an increase in passengers, but not so much an increase in planes. And for anybody who's been on, on an airline uh, recently, they're trying to, again, pack the planes, but they're just, they're not adding new planes. And that's, again, impacting some of those demand cycles because the, pla the planes are more full or, you know, fuller, but they're not adding new planes because, again, it's all about margin. And then the new planes are more efficient. So when you look at it from just the efficiency side, it's why we've been confident in saying 1.45, 1.55 in that range is kind of where we're going to just live. And then propane, propylene, <clears throat> small increase of 57,000. And again, just fairly uh, stable at this point in time. Uh, gasoline demand uh, had that nice bounce. You can see that there is normally a bounce. It just can vary as to when it happens. And again, it's all a matter of where does Easter fall? Where does spring break fall because of Easter, because of Passover? And as that adjusts, you know, that's where you'll start to see these, these ebb and flow. And that's why you get the run up and then we'll get the normal, uh, the, the move down and then you'll get that steady increase until we get to that quote unquote, you know, peak season. So now when we look at uh, crude oil inventories in the US, you can see again, fourth highest, it's you start to normally uh, see some of these rollovers. And it's just a matter of when again, those refiners come back online. When you factor in product, you know, we've come back down to 2019 levels, still very comfortable in terms of where we are. And the biggest issue, and this is something that we, we got wrong, 
was gasoline. So gasoline continues to draw, even though there's a record amount of gasoline in the world. It's just a matter of getting it from Europe, from Singapore to the East Coast, which is where, you know, typically the the biggest drops are just because there's, again, there's no shipping's expensive and gasoline prices don't account for or don't really support that arbitrage, which is why you see a record amount in in Europe, a record amount in Singapore, and still the U.S. continuing to be about 11 million below the five-year average. Now, when we look at uh, days of supply of crude, again, fairly comfortable. You know, we don't see that adjusting up or down, but being at the, uh, at, the at these levels here. Then when you look at gasoline storage, you can see we're, we're moving along the seasonal norm. We thought we were going to stay a bit flatter just because we thought that there was going to be some additional flows coming from Europe into the U.S., but instead, that hasn't materialized in a meaningful way. It's actually gone the opposite, where uh, over the last, I think, over the last three weeks, one or two of those weeks were some of the lowest that they've been going back to 2016. And a lot of that is just the ARB or lack thereof. And the cost, which is, again, kept some of that, that product in the uh, European markets, and we've seen this pull down here, which, again, is very much normal. We thought it was going to be you know, a little bit flatter and that, and that was going to against easier comps. And we're just not seeing that here. So then when you look at distillate, distillate, again, flatlining still at a, at a fairly depressed level, it's just as refiners turn back on, on to capture some of those drops in gasoline, when you make gasoline, you inherently make diesel and obviously vice versa. So we, based on the slowdown on an economic level and the end of heating season, that's again going to put more distillate in storage and change some of the landscape a bit as jet fuel continues to rally. And again, it's just that build up prior to the pull down because more people are going to be flying. You have spring break, you have people traveling for Easter. So again, that's going to adjust things here. Now, when you look at the curve, you could see that there the front months came down. There's still some sort of contango, depending on again what time frame you look at. You're looking at orange is that key uh, period. So the front month has rallied, and it's just because there's been this 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 back and forth. There's the bearish side of prices getting uh, worse on the physical front, you know, more floating storage. But then on the other side, you have. Iraq, uh, you know, cutting four th- 400,000 barrels a day, going from Kurdistan through Turkey by CN pi- the CN pipeline. You have Venezuela that has, uh, they saw their uh, exports drop. You know, so again, there's, there's some back and forth. And it's just a matter of what is driving it right now, which is why we, we're going to stay in this range. Even as some of the economic data points continue to worsen, we're not going to see this big drop. And then when you look at floating storage, this is what we were talking about. You had a big spike in floating storage, and it's just a matter of when does that pull in to help offset, again, some of the ramp up and runs, some of the increases that we're going to see as we get and start to prepare for and refiners start to come back, uh, you know, getting ready for that summer push. So that's what we have for you on the kind of that broad summary side. The next segment, we're going to go deeper into the U.S. and what's happening on the U.S. front, especially on the refined product demand side.